hey, thanks everybody for coming out to Pitch Day for 100K. We're coming to you from WeWork at Town Square in Las Vegas. And I always think it's a great day to pitch. We love doing these fortnightly sessions. And um, today nice. we're going to hear from Jared Applewhite from Kuto. Where's Jared? I had some delicious food from Jared last night. So, so uh, and congratulations to Jared for getting through our process where about 15 to 20 companies um, go through the process for every person who actually gets to come out on pitch day. So uh, and I, I apologize, but not that much for putting you through a bit of a grind to get here because we want to make sure that everything goes well. Um, Startup NV is Nevada statewide nonprofit incubator and accelerator. And we operate seven, count them, seven nonprofit, seven programs for entrepreneurs or founders, if you prefer, and four for-profit investment funds and syndicates uh, that do um, investing. So much of the investing that you've heard lots of people on different panels talking about, uh, we do a, a lot of that. Uh, now, our nonprofit is supported by government grants and by corporate sponsors in the short term. And over the long term, uh, the accelerator companies who get investment from us a pledge a small amount of their equity to the nonprofit, and our investors pledge uh, 25% of their profits, or 5%, it's called a carry, to the nonprofit as well. So as our, our companies and our investors succeed, the, invest, the actual nonprofit uh, receives money from that. And that way we don't hopefully have to be begging for government grants forever, uh, but probably for the next five or six years. So we run Pitch Day for 100K uh, every other Wednesday where companies come out for the Q&A, and for entry into our accelerator program and the investment that comes from Fund NV, which is our pre-seed fund. And now that's added to by our investor syndicate. And that gets matched. That total whole thing gets matched by Nevada's SSBCI program. Now, since 2021, we've done 31 transactions and 23 companies have invested just over $5 million. And those investments range anywhere from $50,000 at the low end. And our biggest one to date has been $1.8 million. The average from all those numbers is about $240,000 when we do make an investment between all of that, about $240,000 is what the company actually uh, ends up with. Now I got a disclaimer I got to read. Uh, the founders pitching today for investment are pitching to our SEC compliance, venture capital funds along with our SEC accredited and Nevada Certified Investor Network Syndicates. Uh, we invite the whole community to attend. We've got a big group of people here today. Thanks very much. Uh, for educational purposes, kind of like watching Shark Tank. Sorry to see Mark Cuban is leaving the show. I think I saw that on social media today. And the, uh, the educational component that is critical to our development uh, mission here in Nevada. So once again, the pitches today are not the general solicitation for investment. Uh, for inv information about accredited investors and Nevada Certified Investor Programs, jump on our website, startvendee.org, uh, or you can just Google it. You'll, uh, you'll find a lot of information about that. So our nonprofit uh, would not be possible without funding from grants and sponsors from the City of Las Vegas, Clark County, uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development, the EDA, and the USDA. Thanks so much to those programs for the support of what it is that we're doing. So I've got a couple of announcements to make that are really specific to this week. And then, uh, and then we'll get to the, to the pitches. Friday, the entire day is at Starbase. That's at 3905 West Diablo Drive. So come on out to Starbase for all the events on Friday. It's not here and it's not downtown. On Friday, it's at Starbase. Tonight it's here. Tomorrow it's at Innovation Downtown. So the, at, at, the, at Starbase, we're gonna be doing a startup showdown which is an opportunity for you to, you to pitch your startup in an artistic way. So that means you can set it to music, you can do a rap, you can maybe do a poem, you can act it out, you can rhyme it out. So we are still looking for um, a couple of uh, presentations and Kara's got her hand raised in the back of the room. here. So if you want to do that, um, or even think you might want to do it, Check, uh, get with Kara and she will set you up for it. It should be a lot of fun. And you don't, no talent is required, which is, if I wasn't like judging, helping to judge the contest, that would, that would be me trying to get, to get up there and do, do something clever. Um, and if you're online and you're just not here today and you don't know, haven't seen Kara in the back of the room, just email her at Kara at startupnb.org. So that was a lot of announcements and it's taken way longer to get to the pitches than it usually does.
All right, first off, just wanted to thank uh, everyone for putting on Startup Week. Um, I've known Startup Vegas and Startup uh, MD for just a bit now, and uh, I really love what you guys are doing. So uh, I love to see it, and uh, congratulations on bringing Tech Stars to Vegas as well. Um, so I'm happy to prevent, present uh, Kuto to you guys today. Uh, we're, we're bringing you uh, Private Chefs On Demand. So busy millennials and Gen Xers, um, owners, business owners, executives, um, athletes, entertainers, they don't have the, uh, typically have the time and or skills to cook. And during a user intake, um, I had someone say to me, um, you know, every moment I'm not spending focused on my personal, my personal relationships, my, uh, my business relationships or my health, um, I lose money. And so in other words, uh, his time is expensive in every sense of that word. So, you know, this is common thinking throughout our customer base. Um, they fully understand that life is finite and they're not going to be here for long. So, you know, that may sound a little, a little crazy, but at the end of the day, it's, um, you know, they, they didn't think they would be here as long as they would be. And so they completely changed how they prioritize their lives, the time and the time that they, they, they commit to. So they adopt things that bring them closer to things or to what matters most to them. Things that give them back more time. So we spend an average of 15 hours a week, Americans do, on between meal prepping, grocery shopping, cooking, cleaning, and, um, you know, or we default to the healthy place that's on the corner. And, you know, and it's all because we don't have time. So, you know, ask yourself, what would you do with two more days a month, uh, 24 days a year or nearly a year every decade? We can, you know, we can always make more money, but we can't make more time. So with Couteau, uh, a common trait amongst our clients is their ability to make more decisions or take more decisions off of their plate. So, you know, whether they don't make money or whether they don't, or sorry, Make, take more, take more, uh, take more things off of their plate that don't make money. We've taken that decision, uh, the decision around what should you eat tonight, off of their plate. And the more time and space you have, you know, you're more, you're able to spend more time with, you know, with a fulfilled life. So how does all this work? We've got a, uh, we created a membership-based marketplace, uh, and so unlike unlike Airbnb, uh, or unlike the Airbnb approach. We've created an on-demand membership where we match it with private chefs. Uh, these are all within our network and they're matched based off of your wants and needs. So the primary difference between these three memberships is the, um, the on-demand membership. This is for those who want to utilize uh, chefs at a higher frequency. So we set them up to maintain a minimum, uh, to maintain a minimum monthly balance or month minimum monthly spend in order to have access to private chefs. A la carte and B2B are typically planning a ways out. So we've got some extra, extra time and space on that, but we still build profiles around. So that's why we call it a membership. Um, and the way we earn is we earn based off of what sells. And as we do this, we're opening up uh, the gig economy for new and consistent workforce for chefs as well. So as far as the market goes, as you can imagine, we spend a lot on food. Um, for events globally, and the private chef market is growing at a steady pace. Uh, we're, we're, you know, our purpose is to build a better engine, to you know something that's more efficient and can you know basically spit out more uh, product for people at the end of the day. Uh, we believe that in the next three to five years we can capture a significant amount of the song. Uh, traction so far has been solid, especially with the current busy, uh, very busy season. Um, for now, we're keeping uh, on-demand clients at bay as we continue to build out the foundational tech for, um, you know, prevention for people taking people uh, taking business off the platform. That means chefs and clients taking business off the platform. Um, and in some cases, uh, we have actually placed private chefs with clients as a, as a full time for a full time gig, but that's for a placement fee. Um, so, you know, what we're building is to be able to kind of return uh, build that that engine of recurring revenue for ourselves. So it's not just a one-off kind of transaction. Um, and even then, so with those clients that we have placed chefs with, they, they still reach out to us for when it comes to, you know, if they have someone that, if they have an event or something where they want specific cuisine, uh, they still reach out to us for events. So 
Um, overall, it's a big problem that we already made smaller for our clients. Um, the ICP uh, on the on-demand uh, for the on-demand membership is typically they typically go off word of mouth, and uh, we've already got a ton of traffic from that already. So, as far as the space itself, there are some competitors that uh, kind of do provide the Airbnb for private chefs. Um, none of them offer memberships. They don't have the on-demand experience, and then beyond that. Uh, they either lack focus on the target consumer, and that's on both ends of the marketplace. So, um, you know, the tools aren't there for chefs to really enable them to actually be able to, to get there on time or be able to react on time uh, or at a faster pace. Uh, and on the user side, uh, it's, it's hit or miss, you know, from what you get. So uh, beyond that, they also take a lot of work and time to use uh, and have a, a much lower frequency when it comes to the customer base on an annual basis. Um, with our uh, on-demand membership, we believe we're creating a new category and we don't need to compete with these guys, to be honest. Um, because it's, it's you know, we're, we're a blend of both, but we're something brand new at the same time. So as far as go-to-market goes, uh, we've identified three core ICPs and um, we've got a healthy relationship with all three. Um, and some through strategic partnerships. Um, the awareness is growing in the city for Couteau as being the on, you know, the, the go-to for private chefs on demand or for events. Um, and we've established uh, two strategic partnerships and that are laser focused on adding more value to both our partners and also our shared customer, um, as well as a partnership with partnerships with acclaimed chefs and celebrity chefs as well. So a bit about us. Um, I found I founded three companies myself. Uh, and have operated my growth strategy firm for the last eight years. Um, we're focused in hospitality and medical space as well, primarily in the medical space. And uh, I also had a concert and musical, a music festival production company for the last 10 years that I sunsetted during COVID. Um, that was, uh, you know, that we, you know, we run, uh, we ran incredible partnerships through that as well uh, here in Las Vegas. Uh, my co-founder, Josh, is a private chef for 15 years and, uh, is an, has an incredible roster of clients that continues to grow. We've actually placed chefs in different cities, but we, you know, that's that's where it, that's where his client base kind of kind of uh, as far as it, as wide as it goes. But we're preventing that uh, while we go deep here for the next few months. And um, he's also launched uh, over fifteen brick and mortar locations here in Las Vegas as either chef partner or or as a executive chef. So we're asking for 1.5 million at a $10 million valuation. We're providing a premium, uh, you know, high touch uh, customer experience. So our customers are at the high, at, you know, at, a, uh, at the forefront of innovation. So we wanna make sure we bring that energy to the space as well, um, out the gate. So especially as we start to step into different cities. So we'll put those funds to, to use to, to kind of scale and shrink that problem that we talked about or uh, talked about earlier uh, as fast as we can. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks very much, Jared. Everybody, let's give Jared a big hand. Okay, round of Thank you. It feels it feels very um, Vegas like we've got travel and food um, as our pitches today. So um, feels like home. So um, so thank you. So but to all of our participants, thanks for tuning in and thanks for being here and being such enthusiastic supporters today. Uh, just a couple of program notes as we wrap up. Uh, investors, if you're curious about how to get in on some of this action. Uh, either joining one of our funds or joining our syndicate. Again, just jump on the website. There's a whole path for investors to, uh, to, to get engaged with us, either in our syndicate or one of the funds that we're, that we're raising. Um, and thanks again to the founders who pitched today and everybody who, who listened in. Okay, yeah, I think we do have Pitch Day in two weeks. So we are not going to be here in two weeks. We will be back downtown in two weeks with Pitch Day. So until then, take care of yourself. And if you can, somebody else do. Thanks, and we'll see you in two weeks.